Hey everyone, in this video, I will discuss async API for Langchain for scalable application building. The main reason that uh, that has come in the way of using Langchain for building scalable apps out of the box is that some components of Langchain are not asynchronous by nature, meaning those components cannot really handle a huge number of simultaneous users while maintaining low latency. Hence, to solve this problem, partially, Langchain provides async support for agents by leveraging the AsyncU library. Async methods are currently supported for the following tools, which are Google Server API Wrapper and SARP API Wrapper and LLM Math Chain. So, check out this uh, code here, example code using the AsyncU library. Towards the end, very end of this uh, code snippet, you can see this line await asyncio.gather and then within parentheses, I'm passing a list of tasks with an asterisk. So this line is a key in, in, in this whole code. So this line above is uh, just using the asyncio library to concurrently execute multiple asynchronous tasks. The asyncio.gather, this function takes in multiple awaitable objects, which can be count a coroutine functions or awaitable objects like asyncio.task instances and returns a future that represents a combined results of all the tasks. By using await, the keyword await before asyncio.gather, the code waits for all the tasks to complete before moving on to the next line of code. The asterisk, asterisk and then task syntax allows passing a variable number of tasks as arguments to asyncio.gather function, making it more flexible. Now, the asyncio.gather function schedules all the tasks concurrently, meaning that they can run in parallel if the underlying event loop supports it. Once all the tasks are completed, the asyncio.gather future resolves and the program execution continues. But the problem is that this uh, particular code snippet that what you see here partially solves the problem here. It doesn't full, it's not really a foolproof solution. And for that, check out these uh, Stack Overflow discussion over here. Here, the developer has implemented a Langchain uh, uh, module as a Python API, which is composed of one main service and various microservices, the main service call when required. These microservices are tools. I use uh, three tools here where uh, uh, the, the three tools are web search, image generation and image description. All are long running tasks. The microservices need to be called as a chain. That is the output of one microservice can be used as the input to another microservice whose output is then returned or used as an input to another tool as required. The microservices are asynchronous for better scalability. But this step breaks the chain. And why is that? Because the first async microservice immediately returns a task ID to track the background work. This output, that is a task ID, is passed as input to the next microservice. But this input is essentially meaningless to the second microservice because the next microservice, that is a second microservice, requires the actual output from the first one to do its job but it's got the task id instead so the chain actually breaks so this example was just to show that uh, the async library does not really solve all your uh, concurrency problem when working with langchain but of course langchain uh, this particular segment of langchain is still work in progress and we are expecting to see some improvement in the uh, coming months now, uh, generally, when uh, you are doing multi-process or multi-threading uh, approach to overcome the limitation imposed by the GIL, that is a global interpreter lock with Python and working with Langchain, few things to keep in mind is, uh, number one, thread safety. First, ensure that the Langchain methods you are using are thread safe. Uh, choose the right concurrency approach depending on your application's requirements. Choose between multi-threading, for example, um, uh, IO bound task, input output bound task or multiprocessing that is CPU bound task also use Python's threading module for multi-threading and the multiprocessing module for multiprocessing and also keep in mind to optimize performance follow the best practices for writing efficient Python code such as using proper data structure list comprehensions and built-in functions 
and uh, in this regard you can use also python's um, number library uh, which will uh, which will speed up your code execution and definitely use thread safe data structure and synchronization what i mean by that is when sharing data between threads or processes use thread safe data structure and synchronization mechanisms such as locks uh, semaphores or queues and of course monitor and debug that is keep an eye on your application's uh, performance and identify any bottlenecks or issues monitoring and debugging your applications can help you identify areas of improvement and optimize your code accordingly and overall of course follow the general best practices while working with multi-threading and multi-processing uh, for example avoid race condition race conditions can occur when multiple threads access uh, shared resources simultaneously leading to unexpected results to avoid race condition use synchronization mechanisms such as locks semaphores or queues when accessing shared resources 